Hi, Stan Rosenthal with the Florida Wildlife Federation. And today I want to talk to you about longleaf pine. Now, we know from records that at one point the southeast it was one of the dominant forest types, just millions and millions of acres. Only 3% is left is the estimate. Um, where did they go? Well, they got logged off and converted to agricultural fields and golf courses and, and, and you name it. And unfortunately, we've lost a lot of it. This is an interesting piece of property that I'm going to take you on today, where this is private land. And there's a lot of private land being restored, and it's pretty exciting. Um, this, this was a couple hundred acres that the landowners bought, and then uh, they logged it off. It had been planted by a paper company, it was in slash pine, probably was originally longleaf wire grass, that plant community, but it got put into slash pine. So they logged it off. And then they got cost shares from the federal government, the USDA Natural Resource Conservation Service. And what they did with that then was the government helped them restore this land. And I'm going to take you through and show you some of the things that were done. Well, I got with the landowners. They had their cost shares secured and it was all logged off. It was quite a mess. And so the first thing we did is we had an agreement that we wanted to preserve the site as much as possible. So what does that mean? Well, first off, the two main components vegetation-wise of this community is the wire grass, that's this right here, and the longleaf pine, okay? Well, we did some walking around and we found out that there was still a fair amount of wire grass still existing on the site. Not at the density we would like, but a fair amount. And what's interesting is, you know, you look at this and you say, oh, this is just some old grass here. But the wire grass, along with the needles of the longleaf pine, are crucial for fire. And this is a fire-dependent community, so you have frequent low-intensity fires. And this wire grass, along with the needles of the longleaf pine, allow burning to come through here regularly. Now, the other thing about this wire grass is we found out that sometimes it can live up to 600 years. So I don't know how old this clump of wire grass is, but I considered it pretty special. But we had to get the longleaf back, and this was planted because there wasn't any. It had been a slash pine forest for decades, which uh, had been cleared off from longleaf originally. I don't know how many times back. Um, but anyway, so we, we wanted to put this, keep, preserve the wire grass and get the longleaf on. So I'm going to tell you how we did that. So we had determined that we had wire grass out here and we wanted to preserve that. Um, but the site was a mess, as I said before. And you had a lot of oaks that were left behind because the loggers weren't interested in it. Some of these had invaded the site because of fire exclusion. Fire would normally keep them out. And there was just a lot of logging debris laying all over the place. So we got with a company that collected all of that for biomass to run a paper mill. What a great idea. Instead of running it off of coal or something else from someplace else, they ran it off of the fuel that was generated locally. So they came in and they actually didn't charge the landowner for it, which saved them over $100,000 on this 150-acre clear-cut site, clearing it off. And so they took oaks like this big old laurel oak and all that debris and cleaned it up. And we did that in April. So that was a good thing to have done. Okay, so we got the debris and the larger trees out. The next problem we had is we had a lot of sprouting from hardwoods, especially these oaks. Now, oaks have their place, but they are disproportionately abundant because of fire exclusion for all those years when it was a slash pine plantation. So had we just planted the longleaf back, we would have lost them and the wire grass and things with all the oaks. So what we did was in August, we came in with a herbicide. We used kind of a special concoction, a little bit lighter amounts, so it didn't kill the wire grass, but it really knocked the oak back, which is great because then it really cleared it out. And you can see that on this site. So the herbicide did a good job of controlling the oaks, but just to give an extra boost, in October we came in with a roller chopper. And if you haven't seen one, that's a big giant drum that's heavy. It has these blades on it and it cuts the roots. So we ran that over the site just to really get it in good shape. Then 
in November we came in with a prescribed burn. We burned some burn piles that were left by the biomass operation last spring. And we burned up any debris and really got it cleaned up. And, and that was a good thing. So then what we did was, that winter, we came in with longleaf pine tubelings. If you haven't seen a tubeling, it's got a little bit of soil at the base of it, as opposed to a bare root seedling. We planted 600 longleaf pine trees per acre. Now, we did that in the winter of 2018, and right now it's June of 2020. And look at the size of some of these trees. A few of them are still in the grass stage, but most of them have gotten out of that and they're really putting on some great growth. We got the competition under control. We kept the wire grass. We're starting to see a lot more other wildflowers and stuff like blackberry and stuff coming in. This is a really neat site. So I wanted to show you a longleaf pine in the grass stage. And I had a little trouble on this 150 acre site because they've been growing so well. But this one's in kind of a shady spot. As you can see, it really hasn't started what we call initiating height and it's an ecological adaptation that longleaf pine has done where it keeps low to the ground, stores up a lot of energy, and then grows quickly through the vulnerable stage with these frequent low intensity fires will kill the other trees, but not this longleaf pine that has its bud and all these things down here low to the ground. So it's safer and so more will survive. And so with frequent low intensity fires every one or three years, a fire comes through, it doesn't build up, it's not that catastrophic, but it gives that longleaf pine an advantage. The other thing about the longleaf pine is they're, they're reported to stay in the grass stage between two and 20 years as they kind of wait for their moment. Now, I think we beat that this place because we got some to pop out in the first year, but this is the longleaf pine in the grass stage. Another thing that we did was we left out some small pockets where we had a thick growth of oak to provide some hardwood mast, you know, acorns and things like that. And so this little spot here, we didn't do the herbicide. It's just maybe a half an acre in size. And this provided some habitat for wildlife to use as shelter and some different food sources. So although we like the longleaf wire grass, this was an area where we didn't find any wire grass. It was heavily grown over with oaks and we just gave that up. And so we didn't have to do all that site prep to it. And we provided these little islands for both food and shelter for wildlife. So even though we did all this site preparation, I wanted to show you this because look at that nice healthy clump of wire grass. We saved that. And here I got a nice, healthy looking longleaf pine coming up. And if you look around me, there's wildflowers and all sorts of different other kinds of grasses like chalky bluestem and coastal broom sedge, all these kind of scattered around in here. This is a healthy forest ecosystem. We don't only going to have the longleaf pine, we're gonna have the understory too. So the take home message for all this is we're out on private land. We've had some government assistance to help pay for, but not all of, the site preparation, the burning, the purchasing and the planting of the longleaf. We worked with another company to supply biomass for a paper mill, which has an alternative for energy use. But the really cool thing about all this is that we're raising timber, instead of a landowner, but at the same time, we preserved and now we're enhancing the longleaf wiregrass system. And the wildlife are responding. Gopher tortoises are out here using it. We've got lots of other species of birds and deer and that sort of stuff. This all can be worked out so we can improve the world we live in.